A rigorous investigation of a causal hypothesis requires manipulation of the independent variable and control of extraneous variables, keeping them all the same across conditions. This type of experimental study requires a large amount of control. Control over the setting and circumstances under which the research is conducted. This is why a lot of experimental research is done in a laboratory or lab. The experimental method, combined with the control that a lab setting offers, maximizes internal validity. Now, in the social sciences, a lab isn't a room full of test tubes and microscopes. It's simply an environment that's entirely under the researcher's control. A lab room could be a small room with no distracting features, just a comfortable chair and a desk with a computer, so that participants can perform, for example, a computerized intelligence test without distraction and all under the same conditions. Or it could be a room with soft carpeting, colorful pillows and toys, fitted with cameras to record, for example, the reaction of small children when a stranger enters the room. The lab is very useful for experimental studies, but that doesn't mean that lab studies are by definition always experimental. They can also focus on non-causal hypotheses without any manipulation, just using the lab to control extraneous variables. Okay, so lab research generally has high internal validity, but some argue that it has low ecological validity. Ecological validity, or mundane realism, refers to how closely the lab setting approximates how people would naturally experience a phenomenon. Suppose we want to investigate the effect of low self-confidence on negotiating skills. Participants in our study are given extremely complicated instructions and asked if they understand. In all cases, the instructions are repeated more clearly, but in the experimental group, this remark is made first. You seem confused. You don't understand these instructions? Wow. Where the wow subtly implies that the participant isn't the brightest bulb in the box. Obviously, this remark isn't made in the control group. The participants then take part in a computer-simulated salary negotiation. They're asked to imagine that they're going to start a new job, and they get the first salary offer displayed on the screen. They're asked to select a counteroffer from one of four options, or agree to the offered salary. Now, of course, this setup doesn't approximate a real salary negotiation, with a face-to-face -face meeting where nonverbal behavior can play a role, and substantive arguments are used in the negotiating process, obviously. But low ecological validity like this isn't necessarily bad. It doesn't automatically imply low construct and external validity. In a lab setting, researchers try to find an experimental translation of the phenomena as it occurs naturally. This is referred to as experimental realism. Simulating the negotiating process using the computer, with very limited choices and no face-to-face -face contact, is highly artificial. But within the lab setting, this procedure might suffice to demonstrate that lower self-confidence is in fact related to accepting a lower salary offer. Similarly, in real life, most people wouldn't become less self-confident just based on one subtle derogatory statement about their intelligence made by a stranger. But in the lab setting, with the experimenter in a position of power and the participant likely to feel judged and vulnerable, this manipulation might actually be very appropriate and in a very effective way to induce short-term lower self-confidence. The experimental translation might be very different from what happens in real life, but that doesn't mean that within the lab setting, the construct isn't adequately manipulated or measured, and that the lab results won't generalize to other, more natural instances of the investigated relationship. Of course, research can also be done in the field, meaning outside the lab, in an uncontrolled environment, like a public area or a private residence. Field research naturally lends itself to the observation of natural behavior in the wild, but field research can be experimental. For example, we could repeat the study on the effect of self-confidence on negotiating success in the field with a group of candidates selected for a traineeship program at a large bank. All candidates undergo one final assessment with lots of very difficult tests. 
We could then tell one half of the group that they scored below average on the assessment, and the other half that they scored above average. And we can just see how well they do in their salary negotiations. Of course, such a study would be highly unethical, and there would be all kinds of variables we wouldn't be able to control for. But both types of studies have their advantages and disadvantages, and they can complement each other. One type maximizing internal validity, and the other maximizing external validity.